Hello, everyone. I am Joe Flick with the Montana State Library. I'm here with Jenny Stapp, our state librarian, and a few other folks who are going to be presenting today. And I just wanted to give you a quick reminder that we do record these sessions and they're all posted to our Vimeo channel. Uh, if you ever need the link directly, just email me and I'll send it to you. But I usually keep the most recent two or three website chats available for you to review. Um, and for my part, I want to let you know that we do have some trustee training coming up and uh, we are starting the getting to know you orientation series from the Montana State Library. This is um, this is going to take us all the way through March. We had planned these for every other Monday, but I had some technical problems the last Monday when it was first was supposed to start. And since next Monday is a holiday, we will actually be starting the Monday after that. So uh, we'll be getting started soon and then we'll, um, we'll catch up a little and have one a week and then start going to the every other week schedule through March. You'll get to meet individual people at the State Library who work for the Natural Heritage Program. We're gonna start with Bryce at the Natural Heritage Program. He's gonna walk you through the Montana Field Guide and we'll end up with um, presentations by Tracy Cook about the consulting and the new public library standards, a little bit about that. Uh, it will be something for you to learn about. These are relatively short, about a half hour each with some time for questions and answers. And we just want you to get to know our state staff at the library. Um, Fall workshops, virtual fall workshops this year, November 15th, 16th, and 17th. The registration for that opens up on the 25th of October. I just finished getting the lineup put together. I talked with a great librarian from North Carolina, who from Appalachia, who is a originally was a social worker and a mental health professional. And she is going to be doing a session for us on our improving our well being and taking care of ourselves. We've got um, other sessions lined up uh, on topics I think you'll find really, really interesting. It's a really great uh, group of presenters. So put that on your calendar and watch for more information. And just a reminder that the Directors Institute, we did have to postpone that until May. Uh, so if you weren't able to join us in September, go ahead and check out the uh, listing in Aspen for that. You can, you can register now. And then we will be having a kickoff event at the virtual fall workshop. So be on the lookout for that as well. That's all I have for training. I am planning to do a training before I retire at the end of the year um, on disaster preparedness. I'm scheduling that for early December. So if you have any uh, anything you want me to be sure to cover, let me know. And then we're just going, oh, I guess we aren't going to do a commission update. That's not today. This was last month. The commission meeting isn't until next week. So we'll just stay on this slide for now. And I will turn things over to you, Jenny. Thanks, Joe. Well, Joe, I guess you've made your retirement website chat official. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably pretty official. Well, like, I've been kind of like plugging Thank my you. ears and, and, and hoping it wouldn't come, but it's it's website chat officials. So it it's time for it's a great job. So I think anyone out there who's thought about coming to work for the state library, you should definitely consider it. It's been a wonderful place to work. And I'm gonna be sad to miss all you guys, but it's time for some new blood to move along. So oh, I, I, I'm not gonna stay, I'm not gonna be one of these people who stays too long. That's my plan. In the continuing education world, um, Jo has just done phenomenal work. And I know because of her leadership, Montana has just a stellar national reputation. Uh, so I suspect, you. I suspect we'll get a, a, a pretty good pool, but they will not be able to fill your shoes, Jo. They'll bring something new and different and exciting. So hopefully I'll leave it in good in good shape. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us for our October website chat. As Joe mentioned, the State Library Commission meeting is next Wednesday, the 13th. Typically, uh, the Friday, the second Friday of the month will fall after the commission meeting, which is usually the second Wednesday of the month, but timing this month uh, didn't allow for that. So um, just to make you aware that the commission meeting is upcoming 
happening on the 13th, we do continue to meet via Zoom. And so our meetings are always posted online and anyone can attend remotely, but the commission themselves continue to attend those meetings remotely as well. There's one thing that I want to make you all aware of on that agenda that might be of interest to you, and that is an overview of our Library Services Technology Act evaluation that's currently ongoing. We've contracted with a firm called Quality Metrics to help us with that evaluation process. And some of you will recall that the Institute of Museum and Library Services, our federal funder, requires us to go through a five-year evaluation. I know Randy with Humanities Montana is going through a similar five-year evaluation with their federal funds right now. So we're, we're in the middle of a five-year evaluation, and then that work will inform a five-year plan that we'll be working on with our Network Advisory Council this winter and into the spring. The staff of Quality Metrics are going to be presenting to the State Library Commission about the evaluation process, any kind of information that they've garnered to date, and also of interest, because this firm is doing these evaluations in other states, they're going to be able to lend some perspective of what they're seeing in other states around similar kinds of programs and, and that kind of thing. So I think that'll be really, really interesting to get their perspective, not only on how we're doing, but how other states use their LSTA funds and encourage you to join in that conversation if you're able to. And it, of course, the commission meetings are also posted and available online after the fact. So if you want to um, listen to that at a later time, you're able to. And then also on this agenda is the annual Federation reports. So if you're interested in getting an update uh, from the federations and how they've spent their federation dollars, that is on the October agenda as well. And there's a link from the commission agenda to our federation dashboard. So you can get an idea about how different federations are spending their federation dollars, which I think is always of interest to a lot of you. So I encourage you to join us 9.30 a.m. this uh, coming Wednesday. That'll be a great meeting. And I just want to say hello to Ann Kish, former commissioner. So great to see you. And thanks for joining us. Um, I'm really excited to welcome a couple of different people to join us today. I'm going to ask and introduce Randy Tanglin first. Some of you might remember Randy. She's the Executive Director of Humanities Montana, and she's joined us before in these website chats to share some updates from Humanities Montana. And then a little bit later, I'm going to introduce Mary. Marilyn Bennett, who works on our staff and is the director of our Talking Book Library Services, she's going to talk about the Newsline program. So, Randy, so glad you could be with us to share some updates from Humanities Montana. Congratulations on your recent Humanities Awards. Those were great. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, we uh, had our Governor's Humanities Awards uh, last Thursday, and we also had our own technical difficulties. So, Joe, I'm, I'm with you on that. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure everybody these days has had some technical difficulties at some time or another. It's very humbling. Yeah, and I think, and so I think I have found that people have always been understanding. So because we have all been there, that's that's for sure. But those of you who are who are signed up for our newsletter, you will be receiving the recording of of those Governors Humanities Awards. We gave five awards this year to Christy Smith, as in Christy the Wordsmith, Jim Scott, Jim Robbins, um, Dorothy Bradley, and Janine Pease. So we had a great slate of, of awardees. And like I said, that will be posted on our website and will come out in our newsletter. Were you going to say something, Jenny? Well, great slate, and, and, and all of them are fantastic. Many of us know uh, Christy Smith because she's been a longtime board member at the Belgrade Public Library. And That's so, right. And she she was key, actually a key help to me in getting the um, radio ads for the hotspot program just recently. So um, everybody who loves those radio ads or have heard them has Christy to thank. Oh, that, that's wonderful. Yeah, she is a, definitely a friend to libraries and, and a friend to the humanities. And that's, I've, uh, of course, after I moved back to Montana a year and a half ago, I recognized Christy's name 
and voice, but I did get to meet her at the Belgrade Library at some point last year. Thank you for having me today. Um, I see some familiar names and faces. I started new at Humanities Montana in the middle of the pandemic. So I haven't been able to come out and meet any of you. And I sure appreciate Jenny and Joe um, inviting me to these website chats um, so I can at least connect with you on, on this, this level. I know so many of you have been involved with Humanities Montana throughout the years. So um, those of you who've um, been with us and have booked our programs, I just want to give you some updates. And those of you who maybe haven't booked our programs uh, in recent years, I wanted to let you know where we are with things. We have our Montana Conversation Speakers Catalog, and I am putting that link in the chat so you can click on that and maybe browse through it while I'm, I'm talking to, uh, to you now. Um, our our speakers were starting to come out into your libraries and um, and give presentations, and they were starting to travel the state. But the Delta variant put that on hold for us. Um, one of our vaccinated speakers actually got COVID, unfortunately, last summer, um, in, well, last August, and that was a reason we switched back to virtual conversations only. Uh, virtual co Montana conversations. Now, I know everyone's burned out on Zoom and your patrons are probably burned out on Zoom, but I wanted to let you know, oh, thank you for sharing that, Joe. And if you scroll down a little bit, folks can see the, the list of speakers. Um, many of our speakers are trained and prepared to give virtual conversations on Zoom. Um, and you'll see that we have, I think some of you are very familiar with our, our catalog. Um, you know some of the different topics that we have. We have Montana history, we have literature. Um, I see here on the screen, our veterans experience um, uh, is really um, highlighted there with Elizabeth Bars. If you scroll through that, you'll see um, a wide range of topics. And like I said, you can book them through us. I know many of you know Kim Anderson. So contact me, contact Kim if you have any questions about our virtual program. Some libraries, I just wanted to give you a few options. Some libraries have been having their, their patrons meet in the library and putting our speaker up on a screen and projecting the, the presentation that way since our speakers can't travel right now uh, due to safety and, and COVID reasons. So, so that's, that, that's one option. Um, and our hometown humanities library in Lewistown is actually booking writing workshops, virtual writing workshops with some of our speakers like Caroline Patterson and Dave uh, Casario. And um, they are both willing and able to do that. And uh, another option that has been working very well virtually is our storytelling workshop with Mark Moss. And I've actually taken place uh, or taken part in uh, one of his uh, virtual storytelling workshops. And, and he really has that format down. And that's another option too. So I just wanted to let you know about that. We hope to be back in person as soon as it's safe to have our, our speakers traveling the state, but uh, we want to keep everyone healthy and keep our, our COVID numbers down. And um, it was a, a tough call for us, but yeah. So you can see we have a variety of speakers. There's Caroline who can give a writing workshop. There's Mark uh, with his storytelling. A workshop that, like I say, works very well virtually. Mo Reynolds, I think some of you, many of you have booked her. Um, she does great virtual presentations too. So just wanted to let you know about that option. I also want to let the uh, all of you know about our upcoming grant opportunities. Our next uh, grants deadline for you or any cultural organizations in your community or your patrons who may be involved in such organizations. Our next grants deadline is December 20. And of course, Kim Anderson in our office is available to answer questions about our grants and uh, grant application. But what I really wanted to let you know about, um, maybe Joanne, if you would click on grants, on top of our page there. 
And if you would click on opportunity grants. Our opportunity grants are for projects less than $1,000. And um, the application is streamlined and straightforward. So if there's something that comes up in your community or something your library would like to host or facilitate, or um, I'm trying to think of different library projects we've funded over the years. And sometimes the library foundations come in for these opportunity grants, book boxes, um, book kits, things like that. Um, opportunity grants are a, a, um, a chance for you to get some funding for that. Now it says that the applications are closed until November 1, because that's when our new fiscal year starts. But if you want to submit an application now for a project that would start after November 1, I wanted to give you that inside information that you could go ahead and submit those applications. And again, um, you can call the office, I can help you with that, or Kim Anderson can help you with that. So um, those are, um, I think, just some opportunities and some upcoming deadlines I wanted you to know about. Um, I'm happy to take a couple of questions if, if people have questions, but I also know all of this information is on our website, and we're always, always happy to take your phone calls, too. I have website envy. I love your website. It's just <laughs> nice and clean and it's just beautiful. Thank you. That was an update before I started. Um, right now we don't, we have been waiving the, Colleen, we've been waiving the fee for our speakers. Typically we have a $75 copay, but during the pandemic with the virtual speakers, we've been waiving that, that fee and Humanities Montana provides a stipend for the speakers. Great question. We have not, someone asked about Think and Drink. We have not been doing Think and Drink because um, it's in person. And right as we were kind of gearing up to get everything going back in person, I think um, COVID numbers um, went up again. And like I said, one of our speakers ended up with COVID. That kind of was a reality check for us this summer. And because we're, um, I know in the libraries, my sense is that, that you're still doing your programming um, and, and still open, but because we're spread out all over the state, it's hard for us to control environments. And so until uh, numbers are more stable, we'll, we're going to keep doing some of these virtual, virtual programs, but we think and drink has not gone away. It will, it will be back. Can, can you just tell us, for those of us who don't know, what think and drink is oh yeah well this is um this is usually a pan some type of a panel discussion uh, featuring some of our speakers or um other community experts on um the and and oh i should say first the drink part is um that that these are programs hosted in local breweries and the think part Oh, is very Montana. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And th the think part is a speaker, a local speaker, or one of our, our usually a panel of local speakers and our Montana conversation speakers um, talking about uh, and giving different perspectives on an issue that's important to a community or just, um, just a current event issue. The, the last one that we had before we uh, shut down for the pandemic was at a brewery here in Missoula, um, offering some different perspectives on the death penalty. So yes, we'd love your feedback on Think and Drink and if you think we should host one in your community and what the topic would be. So thanks for that question. Any other questions or comments for Randy? So glad that you could be with us. It's such, such a great partnership. We really appreciate it. Yeah, great to be here and great to see everyone. And I hope I can see you in person soon. I've been saying that for a year and a half, but maybe one of these days it it will happen. So thanks, Jenny and Joe. Great. Uh, and again, let me introduce Marilyn Bennett. I think some of you have had a chance to get to meet Marilyn. She's been with us for about a year and a half now, a little bit more. 
as our electronic resources and outreach librarian, and she supervises our talking book library services. And we received funding through ARPA dollars. These dollars come through the Department of Public Health and Human Services rather than IMLS and were appropriated to us by the legislature. They've just actually been recently formally authorized by the um, Public Health Commission and recommended to the governor. So sort of all of the, the formal details have been handled, but um, we received $120,000 in ARPA funds to fund two years of a program called Newsline. And I'm gonna let Marilyn share an overview of what that program is and how you might be able to promote it to your patrons and how you might be able to help them uh, get signed up for it. So Marilyn, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So as Jenny said, um, thanks to that funding, we are able to partner with the National Federation of the Blind in order to provide access to Newsline for um, Montana patrons, or for Montana um, blind and print disabled patrons. And so a quick thing about Newsline is a free audio news service for anyone who's blind, low vision, deafblind, and otherwise print disabled that offers access to more than 500 publications, emergency weather alerts, job listings, and more. So they would have access to things like national newspaper, like newspapers like the Wall Street Journal and USA Today. They'd also have access to breaking news sources such as CNN, CNN BBC, and ESP on online. And then also Montana patrons would be able to access these newspapers, the Great Falls Tribune, Missoulian, Billings Gazette, Bozeman Daily Chronicle, the Helena Independent, and the Montana Standard. So if you think of anyone in your community or in your library that would be able to benefit from this, um, feel free to contact me here at the State Library or contact our Montana Talking Book Library and we can um, either talk to you about the resource or you can put your patrons in touch with us directly and we can answer all their questions. So. I can also take questions now if there are any. <laughs> Any questions for Marilyn? All right. Thanks for being with us, Marilyn, and be sure yes, to keep you. your eyes out for more information. We will be reporting back to the legislature on the, especially the number of users of the Newsline program and how often they engage with the program, because uh, if it's to continue, we are going to have to uh, ask for more funding beyond this particular biennium. There is a question from Colleen. Um, do patrons use the same application as for the Talking Book Library? <clears throat> so anyone who is a patron of the Talking Book Library already is already qualified for Newsline. Um, they would just need to talk to their reader's advisor or the person who they work with in the Montana Talking Book Library to get signed up. Otherwise, there are applications on um, the Newsline page and also on our website coming soon. And again, they can just give us a call and we can walk them through the application. And one more question from Jennifer. Are there webinars on using the app? And also, um, we actually don't have a webinar on the Talking Book Library at the moment. Maybe you and I should get together and do yes, schedule actually, something. <laughs> actually, that is something that I've been thinking about, especially with all the Moodle things that we've been doing, is that would be a great one to add to it. So nice segue to Moodle. Um, yeah, yeah, so right? uh, yeah, we, we <laughs> I think that's something um, Marilyn and I will We'll get on that before I retire, get something. I would watch it. Yes, sure. maybe an update <laughs> on on the Talking Book Library and Newsline and mm -hmm. uh, really directed for something that librarians could watch and know how to share that information with their patrons. That'd be useful. Exactly. Good. Thanks for that suggestion. <laughs> All right. Again, Marilyn, thanks for being with us. All right, Joe, do you want to talk a little bit about Moodle? Yeah, if you know, if you don't know, and let me 
let me share my screen again. Um, Moodle is a course management system, and it it is uh, used a lot by colleges and high schools to uh, put together like self-paced courses or support online learning. And we've been noodling about this for quite a while at the State Library and played with um, a service that that our parent, one of our um, organizations put together for about a year before we made the decision to, to go ahead and license a Moodle site ourselves. So Kylie is here, I see on the call, and Kylie and, um, and Maryland and I and also Amelia have been uh, spending our summer learning about how to manage this resource and we're you know ready to launch it. In fact, it officially is launched because Amelia in, started enrolling um, learners in, oh, you don't see my screen, thank you. Try this again. Stop it and try one more time. Let me know when you see it this time, maybe. Any luck? Oh, well, that would be crazy. All right, I'm going to throw you. Um, let me, let me try Joe, one more it, time. Is it prompting you to pick which screen or window you want to use? No, like I, in actually a separate already, window? I already did that. Oh, OK. Let me try it one more time. And then, Kylie, I might have you pull it up and <laughs> let you share it. I don't know why it's doing. It's all right. Well, I'll try one more time. Good old. It could just be my internet connection, which is not great. I noticed there was quite a bit of lag from what I could see and what and what Randy was talking about. At any rate, here's what you need to know about Moodle. Um, we can enroll uh, you into an actual course, and we are planning to use Moodle to support a lot of our online learning so that you can have an um, ongoing conversation or discussion uh, in, our, in a forum. And that makes it easier for you to kind of stay in touch with everybody. We'll also have a place that we can repurpose some of the content that we've created. And now we have literally dozens and dozens of, of webinars recorded in Vimeo, but it's sometimes hard to find things. So we're planning to reorganize it in, in Moodle. So it'll be easier for you to locate material. It'll be, um, things will be uh, displayed so that you can easily find our materials that meet your CE um, requirements. So if you're missing something, a few credits in one category or another. So I'm taking it, you guys don't see it yet, right? Well, it'll be separate from Aspen. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Colleen, for letting me know. Um, it is separate from Aspen, but not but connected. And, and we are we're already working on. So when you complete a course um, in in Moodle, it'll say how many credits it's worth. And we're working on making sure that you will get those credits in Aspen. You can either um, claim them yourself or in some cases, if it's a course that we're monitoring, it's not just a self-paced course, um, then we'll be actually you know, providing you with your credits at the end of the course in Aspen for you. All right, I'm gonna try just doing this on a different screen and see if that helps. Anyway, I. You have to log in to see what I'm seeing, and I and you guys don't have logins yet, so that's not going to be very helpful to give for me to give you the link just yet. Joe, I've logged in. If you want me to give it a shot, yes, I'm going to stop sharing, <laughs> and um, I'm going to make you a co-host, Kylie, so you can share. Where are you? There you are.
and then we'll, the, my technology bad week continues. <laughs> there, there it is. That's what it looks like. And when you log in, you have a dashboard and we'll have uh, certain courses highlighted in the dashboard. We are planning on having an opportunity for you to join a, a team. Our plan is for each of these courses that are highlighted to have a specific color associated with a CE category. So it'd be really easy for you to identify courses that are in a category that you're looking for and how many credits are available for taking that course. So some of these, like um, right now, uh, Amelia is is doing a course and she has a group of people that are the transforming teen services group and and they're taking the course together so there's some parts that are they do on their own and some parts that they get together on and um, and that's the way that we're planning some of the courses the fundamentals of librarianship course is entirely a self-paced course and it's intended for new um, new library staff who have just joined your library and maybe they don't have a library degree or they it's been a long time since they were in library school or you just want them to have a re refresher you can pick and choose the individual units um, in this course and just kind of work your way through it and claim the credits for individual units or you can take the whole thing and and so it's really completely self-paced and self-directed so we're putting together some content like this. I know um, Kylie has got a lot planned for uh, the Montana Shared Catalog resources that are they're currently available, uh, different tutorials and stuff. I don't know if you want to say any more about that, Kylie, but. Yeah, um, so right now we're relying on our online help desk to give people instructions for troubleshooting. Um, the software that's shared in the Montana Shared Catalog Consortium. And those often include short video tutorials, but I'd like to set up some courses that new staff would be able to complete. And then um, for those of you who are directors, you'd, you'd be able to, um, staff would be able to tell you when they've completed a module or a course on certain functionality in the software so you know that they're good to go ahead and use it um, hopefully to save time especially for our uh, our smaller libraries that everyone does a little bit of everything and so training uh, new folks can can be um, a big investment of time and effort so we want to support that anyway we're pretty excited to be able to kind of organize our the training and content that we create for you in a, in a new way and make it kind of available anytime, any place, and in a system that can, you know, where we can see your activity. I mean, currently you watch a video in Vimeo. All I know is that somebody watched a video in Vimeo. I can't, this way I think we'll, we'll be able to um, kind of, you'll be able to give us more feedback. We'll, we'll get, be able be able to organize our content better. And uh, Jenny is actually planning, to working with, with the other departments. I know Marilyn is looking at um, developing some content in Moodle and so is our GIS and hopefully our natural heritage program folks as well. So we're hoping that we'll have a lot more um, accessible and usable. And um, I, hopefully you'll find taking these courses to be really fun and and rewarding. That's the plan. And uh, we are planning to make sure that you get you know, some nice badges in your in your Moodle account as you go along. We, we like the fact that there are badges available. So we're, we're looking at if you complete, say, the fundamentals of librarianship course and do the whole thing, you'll get a badge. So it'll be should be fun when we this is, um, I think, going to really take our the learning materials that we create for you and the training that we do to kind of a whole new level. Any questions for us? And thanks, Kylie, for your technical assistance. No problem. I know it was just all part of the plan, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> it was not part of the plan. All right, 
friends, just a couple of other updates from the State Library. Our staff are still not traveling at this point, and we continue to watch those COVID numbers climb. And I know that's a disappointment to all of us and, and to you. We really do hope we can see you in person in the not too distant future. And appreciate your understanding and patience with us as we continue to navigate these online interactions rather than meeting in person. So our best to all of you as you continue to navigate COVID in your libraries and your communities as well. Um, other than that, things are just sort of steady here at the State Library. We we're really happy that we avoided a federal shutdown last week, although um, we and the, the state themselves are in a good position. Should that happen, of course, we have a lot of federal dollars that come into the state that fund our library development work, but uh, we have some resources and processes in place that mean that it would take a significant, significantly long shutdown before it would ever really impact our services. So we're glad that the Congress did pass an extension and hope that they can pass a, an actual budget here in the near future. So we don't have to have those kinds of concerns lingering over our head. And again, I just encourage you, if you're able to join the commission meeting on the 13th or to watch for that recording once it's available after that meeting. Thanks for joining us. I'm happy to take any questions or have any discussion of anything we talked about or something you might've heard about that we didn't talk about today. I'd be interested in hearing if anyone is um, experiencing any new changes related to the pandemic at their libraries or if it's kind of steady as she goes. Mostly steady, says Sarah down in you're at Bozeman, right, Sarah? I'm, forgive me if I got that wrong. Yep. Jennifer saying in Kalispell, staff and volunteers wear mask, wear masks. We have most of our staff who plan to work in the office, back in the office. Of course, we have a lot of staff who work remotely and those who are in the office are wearing masks. We haven't brought volunteers back into the library at this point. Sarah's saying masks here too in Bozeman for staff and volunteers. Here where I live on the Blackfeet Reservation, there's a mask mandate still. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, with grocery stores and out and about there, you, everybody is wearing a mask. But then I leave the reservation and it's very different yeah. Um, and other places in the state. So, although I I did spend some time recently in um, Yellowstone National Park in September, and there it's a, there's a mask mandate for indoor spaces there, and mm -hmm. um, it was pretty common to see people not so much on the trails, of course, but inside. I just wondered what it was like out there. In my role on the IMLS advisory board, I'm technically considered a federal employee. And so I had to submit proof of vaccination this week to continue with that. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Colleen is saying that Fort Nel Belknap tribe is closing until November 2nd. Mm. Um, Turner School closed until October 18th. Staff continues to wear masks and recommends that patrons wear masks. I know that the uh, library director's uh, interest group at MLA has, has uh, started meeting a couple of months ago every Thursday morning at nine. And, uh, and that's, there's been some 
good information shared there uh, between people about um, ongo just the ongoing, how we ha everyone's handling things. So if you're interested, uh, you can contact, oh, Kara usually attends those meetings and she can certainly help you get connected. It's a nice group. It's a different group every week. Um, and, uh, but I think they're, they're able to talk through some things that I think are very helpful for directors to just speak to directors. So, oh, and there it is, the link to the Zoom meetings on Thursday mornings. Thank you, Kara. Well, with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording. If, and we'll stick stay around for a little bit if anyone has anything else they want to talk about after the recording but uh we're grateful for you sticking with me through my technical difficulties today thanks a lot <laughs>